Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at regular polygons and some of the terms related to that. So let's go ahead and get started. So when we're talking about the word polygon, we're talking about poly, which essentially means many, and we're also talking about the word gonia, a bit in the original Greek, but we're just going to say gones here, which means angles. So when we're talking about polygons, we're talking about many angles. And there are essentially two types of polygons, if you will. You have concave and you have convex. Now when we're talking about concave, there's some sort of an indentation in the polygon. So let's see here if I can try to draw something. Not the best drawer. So then we go up like this and then we come down like that. And so this space right here is called the cave, if you will, and that's why we call it concave. Whereas when we're talking about convex, we're talking about everything being nice and neat and beautiful. So to give you an example of this, see if I could draw this. So like that, come down like this, and then come down like that, and then over, and then like that. Everything is nice and neat and lined up. There's no indentation. This is, of course, convex. And when we're talking specifically about regular polygons, we're talking about a polygon where all the sides and the angles are congruent. In other words, all equal sides. And so there's lots and lots of examples of this. Uh, to give you an example here, we could talk about, let's see if I can get this to work here. We could talk about quadrilateral as an example. This is, of course, four sides. And some examples of quadrilateral Quadrilaterals include squares and rectangles and even parallelograms. We could also talk about pentagons, hexagons, uh, etc., octagons, etc., going all the way down to deca decagons, dodecagons, etc. And so these are commonly found polygons in the world. And so, of course, a quadrilateral has four sides, like I mentioned, you know, the square, the rectangle, the parallelogram, et cetera, like that. Now, we're going to move on and talk about interior angles now, interior angles inside polygons. When we're talking about interior angles, if you want to figure out how this works, it's very, very simple. You take the total degrees, total degrees like that, and you divide it by the number, the number of angles, if you will. So to give you an example, we know that a square, also known as a quadrilateral, it has 360 degrees um, inside it, because it's essentially two triangles, if you will. And so if we took, put that in the, at the top, the total number of, de, of de degrees, if you will, it'll be 360. But we also, also know, excuse me, that there are four angles. So there's an angle here, one, two, three, four. So you divide this, of course, by four, and you find out that each angle is going to be 90 degrees. That is a very, very important uh, tool to remember and understand. But of course, everything is not so nice and neat. So let me see if I can give you another example here. So let's say that we have an example that is a, one, two, three, four, a, a, a pentagon, if you will. So a pentagon is kind of like a house, if you will. Let's see here. Draw like that, like that. Oh, that's kind of ugly. Well, let's see here. I'll just draw the square problem at the bottom, like this. And then I meet up like that. So we got one, two, three, four, five. We got our five sides here. And so what you do to try to figure out how many degrees are inside a pentagon when we're talking about the interior angles, because the interior angles do not always add up to 360 degrees. The exterior angles do, but we're going to talk about that in a second. This is what you do. You pick one side, and you just draw the triangles. So I'm going to pick this point here, and I'm going to draw right here. And I'm going to take this point again. I'm going to draw right here. And you can clearly see that we have three triangles here. One, two, three. That's all we can draw. And so this is what we know. We have three triangles. See if you can follow my math. And we know that inside each triangle, is, there's 180 degrees. And so if we multiply it all together, we're going to get 540 degrees. Now we have to think about how many angles do we have here. Well, let's count those now. So we got one two, three, four, and five. So we divide by five because that's the total number of angles. So there's a, there's a corresponding angle for every side, basically. 
When we do all this simple math here, 540 divided by uh, 5, we get an answer of 108 degrees. That means that for each one of these angles, again, this is not drawn to scale, obviously, because I'm not the best drawer. Each, uh, each angle is going to be about uh, 500, excuse me, 108 degrees. So I probably should have drew this more off to the side like that. That might have made it better, but you get the idea. This is not a math, this is not a, <laughs> this is a math class. This is not a drawing class. Now, we've talked about the interior angles, how to find those. So you take the total, total number of degrees and you divide it by the total number of angles. And we've also learned how to figure out, well, how many de degrees are inside the actual polygon. And this is what this very simple formula right here. You just try to determine how many triangles are there. But of course, there's a little bit more of a formula way to do this, and that is in the following formula that I'm about to show you. And that is going to be n minus 2 times 180 will give you the total degrees. That's how this works here. So if we were to go back to my previous example, where I have, of course, a 5. So watch what we do here. I'm going to go back to my pentagon, and I'm just going to plug in this as it, as it goes. So I had, by the way, I need to explain something. n is the number of sides. I'm sorry about that. So n represents the number of sides. 5 minus 2 times 180 is going to equal 540. This should look familiar. And so now, if we want to get the uh, how many, uh, what are the degrees per angle, you would take 540, like we did on the previous example, divided by 5, and you would get 108 degrees. This should be degrees. This should be degrees. That's how this works. And so this is what you're able to do. And you can use this for any poly polygon, as long as you, a uh, uh, regular polygon, excuse me, as long as you uh, know the number of sides and everything, you can calculate this. Now, one more thing we have to take a look at is exterior angles. Now, the rule is that the exterior angles, they always add up to 360 degrees. Let me give you an example just using a triangle. And when we're talking about exterior, we're talking about outside the actual shape. So here's my polygon here. This time it's a triangle. And of course, 60 degrees, 60 degrees is an equilateral triangle, 60 degrees like that. And so if we want to try to find out what is the length of these out here, so I want to find that guy right there. And of course, if I continue this line down here like this and continue this line, like, whoops, excuse me, not like that, whoops. I want this one to go out like this, like this. Okay, so if you remember your rule for supplementary angles, a supplementary angle is when two angles or two or more angles add up to 180 degrees. And so this means to make this as simple as possible that if this guy right here is 60 degrees, this is gonna be 120 because that adds up to uh, 180. And this guy right here is gonna be 100, 120, excuse me. This guy right here is gonna be 120. That's how it works. Because supplementary angle is always gonna be a straight angle, which is uh, adds up to 180 degrees. And so you can use that. And if we add these up, 120 times three, you're gonna get 360. You can clearly see that right here. So like I said, the exterior angles always add up to 360 degrees. And so all you got to do to figure out the actual angle is you take 360, because they, it always adds up, to, adds up to 360 degrees, and you divide it by the number of sides. And that'll give you the angle of each exterior angle. So I'm going to put EXT for short. So let's go back to the Pentagon example. If I do 360 uh, divided by 5, let's see here. 360 divided by 5, I will get 72. And that is exactly, if you look here, you can see that right here we have a, our internal angle was 108 degrees. That means whatever's left over is going to be 72. We saw that before. Let's see here. All right, so the exterior angles are each going to be 72 on a pentagram. Pentagon, excuse me, pentagon, something that has uh, five sides. And so if you remember the supplementary rule, you just take the interior angle plus the exterior angle will always equal 180 degrees. That's the rule. And so in my pentagon example, remember that the internal angles were each 108 degrees. 
We already mentioned that. And so to find the external angles, I just take 360 divided by the number of sides, which for a pentagon is going to be 5. And this right here is my external angle. That's how it works. And we can also do this for our triangle friend here. The triangle is the one right here to the left. If I take 360 and I divide by, we have three sides, I get 120. And you can clearly see that that is what I have right here. And if I take the interior angle, which is 60, so I'm going to change the color here, 60 right here, plus my exterior angle of 120, you can see that that yes indeed equals 180 degrees. It's brilliant how all this stuff works together. So let me go back and summarize what we talked about and conclude this video. In this video, we talked about polygons, in particular regular polygons. And we began our, dis our discussion by talking about what a polygon is, many angles, and the types of polygons, concave and also convex. From there, we looked at different types of regular polygons, so quadrilaterals like squares and rectangles, to pentagons, hexagons, octagons, etc. And basically, you can figure out the interior angles, the, the measure of the angles inside the actual polygon, the shape, by taking the total no degrees that are in that shape and dividing it by the total number of angles. So at the bottom of the screen, we have an example here of a square and how this works. Next, we took a look at a shortcut for, or a, a, not a shortcut, but how to do this when maybe we don't know the number of angles. And you can do that by seeing how many triangles will fit inside your shape and then doing things accordingly. So here in this example with the, uh, it's supposed to be a pentagon, we have three triangles inside it, three times 180 degrees, because we know that a triangle has 180 degrees in it, and that'll give you the total number of, total, total number of degrees inside it. And if you want to know, well, how many, what, how, how, what is the measure of each individual uh, uh, angle, if you will? You divide it by the total number of angles and you get 108, like you can see right here. And then after that, we, show, we are showing here a, a simple formula for how to calculate this to save a lot of time. The number of sides minus 2 times 180 will give you the total number of degrees. And then I demonstrated that below, and I even showed you how many, how the measure of each angle. And then on this screen, we start to talk about exterior angles. I didn't write it at the top, but the exterior angle is the one on the outside of the shape. We've talked about this before with, with transversals. And so to make this as simple as possible, you can basically use your knowledge of the supplementary rule, sub supplementary angle rule to figure this out. So uh, a supplement supplementary angle always adds up to 180 degrees. And so you take your knowledge of the interior angle to find the exterior angle. And then, of course, also remember that the exterior angles always add up to 360 degrees. And so if you take 360 degrees and divide it by the number of sides, you will know the measure of the exterior angle. That is very, very important. And so we showed you how to do this on this screen. So that's it. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching, and take care.